back live with you tonight, you're in focus. Thanks for staying on and uh, reporting continues. Now, the decision by the Swana University of Technology to open a campus in Guiana in Limpopo will provide a unique opportunity for high school pupils uh, in the Mopani district and beyond. It's envisaged that the facility will focus particularly on digital agriculture <laughs> courses and science education. For more on this, uh, we are talking now uh, to Professor Diniko Maluleka. Uh, we also have with us in uh, the studio Usi Peningove, chairperson of the Limpopo House of Traditional uh, Leaders uh, with us in the studio. Uh, Prof, let's begin with you. Good evening and thank you very much uh, for your time and uh, for joining us uh, tonight here uh, on uh, In Focus. You call this one of the greatest interventions of the Department of Higher Education Science and Innovation at this time. Why so, Prof, and what do you envisage this campus being able uh, to do for, for the people of uh, Guyana and Limpopo? Well, I think the department uh, deserves uh, all the credit. I mean, you introduced this by saying it is our decision. Only partially. It is really the department that has seen fit to extend technology education to a part of the country that does not have uh, access to technology education at all, to a cluster of schools whose uh, matriculants have to travel far to find uh, technology education, to an area that is uh, rich in agriculture, uh, rich in nature conservation, and uh, but without, uh, you know, a place for, for the skilling of uh, the young people to participate in these industries. So I think credit goes to the, to the department. Of course, TUT has raised its hand and said, yes, we will partner with the department because among the many institutions in the country, we probably have the greatest experience in the leadership and management of distance campuses. Because, as you know, we have a distance campus in Malatemi, at Mbombela, in Pulukwane, in Harankua, in Soshanguve, and uh, in, in the city of Pretoria. So we, we have been working with this model for some time. We have the experience to, to do this. We also have the qualified staff to do this. As a University of Technology, our, our, our mandate is to produce technicians and technologists. We don't produce suit-wearing uh, clerks and, 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 and other, you know, the, the, the conventional forms of public servants. Yeah. We produce students who can take a computer apart and put it back together. We can take an engine apart and put it together. Uh, we, 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 we produce uh, students who, who can participate in the so-called for IR in the intersection between technology and education. So we are excited about yeah. this. Uh, so are you, are, are, we'll come back in a moment and you'll tell us more how you, you, are, you what is that approach that you're talking about that produces that degree of production and, and future ready graduates. But let's bring in the OCA. Ozingobe, why has it taken so long to bring technology education to the people of, of, of Guyane uh, in Limpopo? What, what have been the deliberations? What have been the bottlenecks? Uh, thank you very much and uh, uh, well appreciated for being invited here. And good evening, Prof. Abshay, um, Ruperi. I, I think uh, primarily as a as community, when we initiated this uh, move, we, we requested the Department of Higher Education then to offer us the university, a standalone university. So it, it is out of that experience that uh, when the department came back to us, negotiated with us, and you know the issue of budget, and, and you will know that uh, after 1994, there are two universities that the government has, uh, has come about now in the Northern Cape and in Pumalanga. And obviously we were late on the queue. And uh, you will know that in Lipopo there are two universities already that are existing. So that is the reason why it took so long, but at least finally, uh, where we are now, we are happy. It's not what we wanted, but it's a work in progress. And uh, we hope that uh, in the very near future, uh, we will demonstrate that there is a need for a full-fledged university. So we are quite excited about the 
you know, the offer that the department and the university has come about. Yeah. And, 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 and where is this university now going to be? Because, of course, uh, there is that mention of, of the cost factor of starting a new university. So where is this campus, shall we call it, going to be operating from? It is going to be in Guiani. Uh, it's, not, it's not like uh, we're going to start debushing the field. Uh, there is an investment. Uh, there is an asset that was built during the homeland uh, by Gazankul government. But remember, those are taxpayers' money. It's not like it was built by any donor. It was our own uh, people that contributed you know, through their taxes to build uh, a teacher's uh, college of education. So, and then that facility was closed down, and, uh, well, the, the rest is history. It's a facility that actually, if you were to look at the replacement value as it is today, it will not be less than half a billion, I mean a, a quarter of a billion rands that is standing there idling. So it is there, it is just going to be ignited, to be renovated, and uh, hopefully, you know, it will get to where it's supposed to be. But it, there is an investment already that has been made by the community, and then it is there. Yeah. What, 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 what are the spin-offs of this? So what are the other attached initiatives uh, that, that, uh, that would be developmental in nature towards the area that would be attached to having a campus of this sort? Well, uh, there are a number of spin-offs. Uh, one, it will be very difficult to quantify exactly because, for example, if you look at uh, most of our children, uh, they are, you know, they, they don't have parents. Uh, and if they have to leave Guiana, for example, and come all the way to Houghton, uh, you, know, you, you know the crisis, you know, during the registration period, it will be, there's a stampede, there's all those things. But now the spin-off is that these children or these students, they will be leaving from their home and just go to school and come back home and do their other responsibilities. But at the same time, it will ignite a lot of other business, you know, activities in the area. I mean, we are expecting that at, at, at the final analysis, uh, this campus will handle over 20 million, I mean, over 20,000 students. That alone comes with a lot of things. It means, you know, the local economic development will be there in a number of fields. So there are lots of spin-offs. But at the same time, it is high time that our, 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 our children or our kids must not, you know, pay so heavily for to get education because that is a constitutional, uh, you know, issue, uh, the issue of, of education. So it is a spin-off on its own because it will be localized. Yeah. Yes. Prof, what comes with your brand of uh, uh, tutor, tutelage, uh, learning, and qualification that you say does not only prepare the students uh, for, for entrepreneurial uh, endeavors, but also for the, for the future of work? Yes, the focus on the future of work and on future readiness is really um, what the heartbeat of the China Investor of Technology. Uh, we are big on future readiness. There is no point in training uh, students for jobs that are extinct or jobs that are on their way out. It is important to look into the future and to think of jobs that may not even exist as yet and equip the students accordingly. So this is, this is the thing. Universities of technology, like our, ourselves, are really a bridge between the academia and the world of work. And that bridge uh, has not always been strong, uh, especially if you look at traditional university education. Such is the relationship that we build between ourselves and industry that when we do our curriculum, we invite uh, industry to the table. We actually ask some industries to come and squat and incubate on our campus so that students are able to, to do what we call work integrated learning even before they complete their qualifications. That's the kind of education uh, that we provide. We produce uh, students who can work with their heads, with their hearts, and with their hands. Uh, students who can get things done. If you look at the crisis of employment in our country, we are actually uh, quite a, an ironic contradiction as a country. On the one hand, we have high unemployment rate. On the other hand, we've got lots of work that needs to be done. It's visible to their eyes. You just walk in any township. You can see 
the work that needs to be done on the roads, on the uh, electric poles, uh, in, in, in terms of the plumbing and so on and so forth. So what we don't have are people with the requisite skills to do that. And universities of technology are precisely created to do that. We think that we are contributing to the job market uh, in, in, in ways that have yet to be properly accounted for in our current system of um, uh, in, in the, the metrics that we use to calculate the contribution of universities. So we, we, we produce that kind of, of graduate um, uh, table. Yeah, yeah. Now, in, in terms of the offering, I know you're saying there's still deliberation uh, broadly with the Department of Higher Education, but you envisage that this will be uh, incorporating some of what is uh, in, in, in inside or hinted, at least in the National Development Plan, but you're also indicating that the Limpopo Development uh, uh, Plan uh, would also inform what those offerings are. What, what do you imagine that would look like? I mean, we know, for example, that uh, agriculture in that part of, of, of South Africa would be particularly one of the, the a good areas to, to at least look at. Yes. So generally, we are going to focus on maybe three or four general disciplines or areas of specialization. One of them is engineering, and there is quite a number of qualifications that we are proposing to offer there around the engineering fields, electronics, uh, um, mechanical engineering, but also in the interface between engineering and agriculture. We're also looking at ICT. Uh, as you will know, at the Tony University of Technology, we have an ICT faculty, one of the few universities with such a faculty, standalone faculty. And applied um, science is, is a very strong uh, area also that we, we hope. So if you look at the kinds of qualifications that I was rattling out when I was speaking at Guiani, they fall generally within these three areas. We, we also will look at uh, training teachers so that they become more technologically able as teachers. Uh, and, 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 and science education is, of course, also very important for us. We'll also do a lot of short learning programs for the local industry where business people and small business owners will be able to come in and get um, qualifications and skills uh, on a shorter uh, period, which is below uh, what is required for, say, a diploma or a certificate. So it's those kind of areas that we want to impact on because we want to produce um, te technologists and technicians who can work in uh, animal husbandry, in uh, crop science, in food science, those kinds of areas that relate and articulate with the farming uh, industry that is in Limpopo already. Yeah. Also, about the opportunities for collaborations, particularly maybe with other colleges there, there's, there's no duplication, but uh, certainly to, to benefit from, 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 from this connectedness. Yes, I, I think that is, uh, it, it goes without saying, because remember, uh, all these institutions will be falling under one department. And uh, as the minister has already alluded, that this is going to be a precinct uh, in the area, meaning that there will be some offering that will have to be done by the TVET colleges, there will be some offering that will be done by the community colleges and the like. But at, at central to this, it must benefit, it must benefit the needs of the people. And I... And I'm glad that because the TUT has already done some needs analysis, so it will not be just having students there. It might be students in terms of the relevance of the area. What is it that that area requires in order to uplift the socioeconomic of the local people? So yeah. definitely there must be some collaboration. But you, you, you should have done your own as well analysis. I mean, how do you see this fitting into the Limpopo Provincial Development Plan? Definitely, definitely for sure, if we did not do our own analysis. <laughs> <laughs> If we did not do our own anal analysis, the, the minister and TUT would not have been interested. Yeah. So we have, put, I mean, uh, uh, Katsani Education Initiatives and uh, uh, Royal Leaders Unit of Batsonga Machangani and, and, and all of us, we have done our own analysis because we do have, you know, experts in the community. That's what has triggered the interest of uh, TUT, the interest of the minister to say this, it makes sense. So we have done so. Yes.
No, let's appreciate uh, the work that you're doing and let's appreciate, of course, TUT also raising its hand uh, and uh, saying they want to be a part of it. And uh, we look forward uh, to great work coming out uh, of this initiative. And yeah, and of course, the bigger picture of that university being erected uh, someday fully uh, belonging to the people of uh, Limpopo. Yeah. That is uh, the chairperson of the House of Traditional Leaders in Limpopo, Osipe Ningobe, as well as uh, Professor Dinyiko Maluleke, the Vice-Chancellor of uh, Tswani University of Technology.